Hello, Master Paul Hawks here. I'm here with Grandmaster Sergio Erona, and today we're going to ask him a few questions about his background, history and training, the vast array of seafoods he's trained with, and of course the headquarters in China. So if we start off, uh, Super Sergio, it's nice to meet you. Again, okay. been Pleasure. here for Pleasure. several days, I mean five I think, and having a fantastic time. I'd start, like to start off really with a bit of your background, you know, when did you start, had, you know, what, what led you to, to, to start training in martial arts? Uh, actually, before I was really aware of any, any, anything, uh, when I was six years old, I got forced to join a judo club. So it was not my own decision. And to, to be quite honest, I, I hated it. I had to go every Saturday and every Thursday evening and every Tuesday evening, if I can recall, to judo. And I really did not like it. You know, and getting thrown around and stuff. But that was my first experience when I was six years old. Then it changed a little bit because I, at around nine, ten years old, I became really uh, a fan of Bruce Lee. So my interest became martial arts. Yeah, it's a little bit funny. So, but really, really loved the martial art in a very deep way. And uh, my mother really forced me to not watch <laughs> the Bruce Lee movies. So it got all turned around and I was watching every Bruce Lee movie like six times a day and it was my hero. So, but it reinforced again that I didn't want to do judo because in judo there were no, there were no punching, no kicking. And I begged my mother, yeah, can I do, join the karate club or kung fu club? I want kicking and punching, yeah, and judo does not work, yeah, it's throwing, but before you can grab somebody, you get hit already, you know? but they didn't let me. So what happened is uh, when I was around 11 years old, I started with some friends to just uh, visit because it was around the time that I was allowed to go alone in the street, right? So play outside and so it was a little bit like an adventure in the neighborhood visiting different kind of martial arts studios and just do trial lessons because I didn't have any money to join a club back then. So I just did a trial lesson there, I did a trial lesson there, you know, we were like uh, kids, but we had one uh, more like a chief kid, like a leader, right? This was Paul Isapali, his name was, he was a little bit older than us, so he could take us in, in the clubs and make it look a little bit more serious. So that was the, the, the first step. And when I was 13, I finally... Uh, got my premises so far to, to let me join a Wing Chun club. So I started Wing Chun and actually that was with Wang Q. I met Wang Q when I was 13. I did not study really directly under him. At that time he gave uh, some seminars and he was sometimes in school, but I did actually the lessons with uh, Rob Vogel, it was called. He was one of the first pioneers of Wing Chun in Holland. And yeah, but I was there maybe for a month or six, then I got into a, a car accident and yeah, it was pretty bad, so I was six months out of order and at that time I got the book of Kramer's Lung Ting in my hand, uh, Wing Chun Kuhn. So I got really interested in, in his way of doing things, I wanted to join the Lung Ting affiliated school when I got better. So I did that in Amsterdam. And at that time was the Sifu uh, called from Schaefer. So I started there, did an instructor's course by him, uh, yeah, traveled all over Europe, finding different masters because in the EWTO, that was the association I joined, the European Wing Chun Organization, which is part of the IWTA, the International Wing Chun Association of Grammar Saloon Team. Yeah. I found out there is many different ways. Everybody did it a little bit different. Yeah? I did that, I found that out in the international seminars. So I saw all the different masters, all the different seafoods, and everybody had his own style. And I wanted to get as close as possible to the original way of how Grandmaster Lung Ting did it. Right? So I visited all different masters, eventually breaking away a little bit from, from Schaefer. And I yeah, studied under maybe 10 different European masters. But then around 94, also got really uh, yeah, enough of that, yeah? because yeah, that guy told me to put my tans on like that, that guy told me to put it like this, this guy told me that, yeah? Yeah, it was yeah. all contradicting. So I said, okay, you know what I do? I go to Asia and I go to the source. So that's a very long story, which I will not 
uh, yeah, here in Cape Town. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a uh, it's maybe a two-hour story, okay. the whole history. Yeah, but yeah. finally, I got accepted uh, as a private student of uh, Grandmaster Lutheran. It was 1996, and from 1996 till 2001, I basically went on and off to Hong Kong, stayed for periods of three months and got uh, a lot of private lessons. It were around 100 private lessons. And, but, the, but the key element here, what the people, many people don't understand, is the key element here. I was the chief instructor of Israel at the time for the EWTO. I run a school in Tel Aviv. But I went to uh, Yugoslavia. Uh, I, I did all the programs to the fourth level technician in Europe. And then I went to Yugoslavia, to Sigoslav Kotruntic, to finish the Unarmed Learning System under him, so when I would have my first private lessons with Grandma's LinkedIn, it was only corrections need to be made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well if I, if I can sort of add, I know that one of, one of the main reasons I came to, to uh, sort of train with yourself and learn under you was because as a senior person within the EWHO, the Chief Instructor along with uh, Andrew Cameron for England, I was privy to certain information and I remember that Grandma goes back to me a number of times and said that after your, your time with uh, Grandmaster Ling Ting, you, you'd seen the whole system and you were incredibly knowledgeable. And in fact, uh, Master Abel, who I, has been Abel, who I also trained with, he had said that you were an incredibly talented student. So I know uh, Grandmaster Kurtzberg had said that you went to see Grandmaster Ling Ting already for the EWTO, far more knowledgeable than your apparent grade would have uh, indicated. Yeah. Yeah, I was at the time, I was a. Uh Third level technician, chief instructor of Sea of Israel, 